What if we are experiencing less happiness because we are not getting our personal message out there enough? We're not expressing our voice enough. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Welcome back to the show. Welcome back to the podcast. You're with me, Kevin Wright, on the Kevin Wright Show. You made it to the show. You made it to the podcast. I'm just sitting here sipping on some coffee. Sipping on coffee. It's nighttime. It's nighttime. I'm sipping on coffee. Uh, What are you sipping on? Hopefully, it's like a whiskey or a decent margarita. Uh, Water break. Water break. Yeah, hopefully, you're sipping on something tasty. Here on the podcast, we talk a lot about happiness. Somebody recently asked me, he's like, why is that such a big topic for you? And I was thinking about it, how to answer them, because it is the topic. It's all there is. Everything we do in life, everything we talk about, everything we do at work, everything we do with our family, everything we do financially, everything we do food-wise, everything we do drink-wise, vacation, the way we spend our time, we are either consciously or subconsciously hoping to move toward happiness. Some of us don't know it, but happiness is the biggest topic in our life. What's going to make me happy? What are the things that I can do that can contribute to my happiness? And there's a shit ton of those. There's a shit ton of those that we talk about here on the show. I think it's the best topic. I think it's the greatest topic. Meaning, fulfillment, message, having a purpose. These are all connected to happiness. You could define it in many different ways, but I just love that topic. I love the topic. What's going to make you happy? What's going to make me happy? Are we taking enough risks to find happiness? So that's why we talk about it on the show all the time. I love the topic. And I was thinking about this one aspect of happiness that is often overlooked, that we often don't talk about enough. And the question is, what if, what if we are experiencing less happiness because we are not getting our personal message out there enough? We're not expressing our voice enough. What if one of the most overlooked things about happiness isn't what we're eating and what we're drinking and our fitness? Those are all important. And it isn't so much our relationship, super important. I think that's connected to happiness a lot. And our time with family. But what if one of the most overlooked aspects of our happiness is we're not expressing ourselves enough? The thing that got me thinking about this is I was talking to my friend who is a model. And she was saying how she has all these messages inside of her. She has all these things she's passionate about. She has these meaningful ideas and things that are big passions in her life. But she finds herself on Instagram constantly posting just pictures of her body. And she feels trapped because she 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 said a couple things. She confessed a couple things that I agree with. She said one, when she posts a picture of herself in a bikini, um, she gets a ton of likes and it feels really good. Of course. And people are calling her powerful and people are calling her beautiful and sexy and giving her lots of props and it's opening up doors and windows for her and it's opening up opportunity and all these likes start skyrocketing skyrocketing on Instagram and it's you know it feels really good to her but she said a lot of times she wants to make an Instagram post about a message or a view or a a, a passion that she has or a political statement even but she's afraid of what people might think and so I asked her to break down that fear okay well what's that fear what's that fear of expressing yourself talking about the things that are meaningful to you finding your happiness by having a message in a voice. And we came up with three things and I walked her through these three things. One, we determined that she was afraid of her fans finding her to be cheesy. You know, it is kind of true. Like right now in internet culture, a lot of us have experienced this. You don't say certain things because you don't know how to say it in a cool way. You don't know all the internet lingo. You don't know all the current speak. You don't know how to speak the way that the kids are talking these days. And so a little fear builds up when you want to say something meaningful or touching or from the heart that your fans will find you to be cheesy, a cheese ball. And they'll just kind of bypass what you're saying. And on that same note, some of your fans or the people around you might not take you seriously or might think you're bullshitting because you're usually posting a picture of your physique or usually posting a picture of your vacation or a picture of uh, something extravagant from your life and you're getting lots of likes. But then if you post a statement, if you post something meaningful, some poetry that's been in your heart, an idea that's been in your heart, something that's important to you, 
and you post about it and you express yourself about it, there is a risk uh, that people are going to give you feedback that you don't like. Fear of the feedback from your fans, fear of the feedback from the people in your life, maybe even close people in your life. You don't want to come across as cheesy. And we got to break through that. That's That sucks. That's a blocker to happiness. It's okay to come across as cheesy. First of all, who even cares about that? I know it's a, we got a podcast coming up later this week about learning to not give a fuck. Learning to not give a fuck. And that is, I call it the art of learning to not give a fuck. Because it's an art. A lot of people say, hey, just don't give a fuck what other people, but that's not that easy. It's easier, easier said than done. It's an art form in learning to not give a fuck and learning to trust your instinct and learning to do you and not be motivated by the acceptance of other people. Learning the art of learning to not give a fuck. So one of the things in not confessing the passions of your heart, one of the things in not talking about a message that's been on your mind or something that you're passionate about is what if they think I'm cheesy? That's real. That's legit. I hear that. I hear that, but you can definitely overcome it. I'm reminded of an example. I'm really good at learning languages. I've spent some time in different cultures and it's just very important to me to try to learn those languages and I enjoy it and I'm really good at it. I've been in tribes where I've learned the local dialect and vernaculars and I've been able to pick up on it real quick. I spent some time in Mexico and I was able to immerse myself and and become conversational. In some different cultures, I love learning the language, but I realized If I'm not willing to make an ass of myself to look like a fucking fool on a regular basis in front of these locals and these nationals, I'm not going to learn as quick. And so I would, I would be the one in our group. I'd be the one in my squad to test the language, to try it. And a lot of locals would laugh at me. Oh my God. Um, But I realized if I could get over that, I was going to immerse myself and learn the language quicker. And there's this fear about getting to that awesome point of fulfillment, learning that language, becoming a part of that culture, getting in. There's this fear, what are they gonna think? They're gonna make fun of me. First of all, when you say things that are meaningful, when you say important shit, when you get into important topics, yes, people will make fun of you. People will make fun of you for sure. If you're if you're an Instagram bikini model, there's a lot of those out there. No offense to my friend. There's a lot of those out there and it's become a thing that people can aspire to and there's nothing wrong with it. It's an awesome, if you can make a career out of that and you enjoy it and you like working on your body and being a part of that and you feel strong, go for it, go for it. They have to deal with a lot of comments too. But for sure, anytime the topic is important, it's gonna make waves. And if you're talking about something on your heart, there's gonna be someone who disagrees with it. Maybe, right now, mark my words, one of the biggest things that comes up in the next presidential election is going to be gun control. There's going to be people flipping out about gun control on both sides of the topic, both sides of the topic and demanding that our next set of leaders in all levels of government have a strong stance on gun control one way or the other. People are going to be losing their minds about it. If you are passionate about gun control from one of the sides and you make a statement about it, dude, you're going to get some feedback. You're going to get some buzz back. No matter how genuine and beautiful you are about a meaningful statement, Anytime you talk about something important, it's gonna cause some some it's gonna cause some backlash. It's gonna cause some difficult things. So for sure, the fear of coming across cheesy or the come uh, coming across as too earnest or 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 creating some waves or maybe causing some of your fans to not like you, yes, that's that's gonna happen. And you gotta weigh those pros and cons. But just know if you talk about important things. Yes, you're going to get, people are going to go off on you. People are going to make fun of you. There are insecure people who, when they see somebody be vulnerable, when they see somebody take a strong stand forward on something, the insecure people love to make fun of that. And also on a side note, it's okay to deal with comments of people making jokes about you. Just get used to it. If you want to be a public person, if you want to be in that limelight, if you want to be in the spotlight, get used to it. Um, some people call them haters. I, I don't love that term, but there, there are haters out there. Uh, get used to it. Yes, you will come across as cheesy to people. Yes, people will distrust you. Yes, people will. You will lose some followers when you make important, important statements. But you got to ask yourself, 
is that blocking your happiness by not standing for meaningful things and not having a place where you have an outlet for your passions, for your message and your voice? That's a, that's a great topic. That's a great topic. So the first fear of not speaking your message and that thing that's important to you, what if people think I'm cheesy? Ah, I'm pretty cool. I'm pretty light. I'm pretty chill. I'm chill like that and I'm smooth like that. I'm the person at the party who doesn't make waves. I'm the person at family Thanksgiving who smooths shit out for everyone. I smooth that shit out. I'm the person who at, at Christmas, I, I, I stop the fights between my mom and my sister. I'm the person, if I come out and say meaningful things, God damn it, people are going to get fired up. You got to figure out how important it is to you. Man, I... I uh, I just watched this documentary about the rugby players in New Zealand and it's about the national New Zealand rugby team and all the shit they go through. They have this legendary coach who's won more um, world championships than anybody else. And the way he talks to his players in the locker room and in the coaching motivation is really inspiring to me. One of the things he always says to them, he says, he's like, he's like, hello boys tonight, tonight when we go out, when we go out, onto the rugby field, the rugby pitch, whatever it's called. Oh, I, I want you to express yourself. I want you lads, I want you boys to express yourself, fully express yourself. And it's this big hulking coach. He's talking to these massive um, muscular athletes, these men. And in this quiet, gentle voice, he's like, fully express yourself tonight, lads, my boys. Get out there with the boys and, and fully express yourself. And what he's telling his rugby players is you have an opportunity tonight to just let it all out. You're all gifted. You're all talented. You have these things that have made you the best in the world. You're the best 10, 12, 15 rugby players in the, in the world. Express that. This is your life's passion. This is your goal. This is your joy. Fully flush that out. Express yourself tonight in speed in strength, in brutality, in technique, in skill, in brotherhood, in taking care and defending each other, in, in trusting each other and getting each other's back. Fully express yourself. I love that coaching strategy. Fully express yourself. And if you're worried about having a cheesy message, get over it. It's going to be cheesy. Don't, don't even be worried about it anymore. If you have something important in your heart, it's going to come across as cheesy for fucking sure. For sure it is. And there's going to be people who say, oh, here you go. Getting all serious. Here you all getting all righteous. That's all right. It's, it is going to come across as cheesy. Don't even, don't even fear that. Embrace that. Embrace it. And also don't apologize. Don't apologize. Hey, I know this might sound cheesy. I'm a model and I usually am showing you exotic locations and sandy beaches and my and a little sand on my ass, my perfectly toned sandy ass. But I, I got a message. Don't apologize for it. Just do it. Especially if, if there's a therapy for you and there's a happiness for you that comes out of expressing your voice and a passion. So yes, you will come across as cheesy. Embrace that. Another fear that we talked about in, in having a message, in having a voice and putting it out there and talking about shit in public, writing about it maybe, blogging about it, podcasting about it, is what if my mind, what if my mom and my dad find out that I have different beliefs than them? The fear of exposing your beliefs. Woo! The fear of exposing your beliefs. But that is a, that is a true fear. What if somebody close to me finds out about my true beliefs and I expose myself? Well, you got to ask yourself, do you want to live in the shadows anymore or do you want to stand for something? You know, do you want to stand and, and have a voice about something? You know, back to the gun, gun control thing. In my family, that's a volatile topic. It's a volatile topic and it leads into all sorts of other things. Man, we just had another shooting in the news. It's kind of getting to that point where you wonder, is my town next? Is my Walmart next? Is my library next? Is, it, is my kid's school next? It's getting to that place here in America and it's an important topic and it needs to be discussed. And I'm always encouraged when I see somebody who's passionate about it on either side, especially if they can put across their argument and their message and their voice in a kind way, in a way that opens up topic in a learning way, in a way that allows other people to be involved. So it's an important thing for a lot of people. But what if my mom or my dad finds out that uh, I believe this thing that they didn't know about? I'm really scared about it. I'm really scared about it. Chances are, 
If you're feeling like the heart palpitations and the fear about something, it's something you got to confront. And you don't necessarily have to confront it publicly. You don't necessarily have to go on Instagram and say, hey, these are my eight controversial beliefs. Dude, what the fuck? That would be so funny. What if what if your whole Instagram account, your whole Facebook account was just watch me get controversial. Oh, hey, by the way, that is what a ton of people do. Our topic today, though, is what if you're missing out on passion in life and happiness in life because you're just kind of in the hamster wheel of doing the things you're supposed to do, making the money, paying the rent, making the money, paying the rent, paying the bills, making the money, being this person, being beautiful, falling under this pressure, but you're not saying things that are in your heart. You know, this isn't like a preaching podcast today saying, hey, everyone get out there and have a message. That's not, this is for those who are saying, Dude, I got shit. I got shit to talk about. I got shit in here that's important to me and I'm a, I'm afraid, but I know I need to find an outlet. I need to fully express myself somewhere somehow. But what if my mom finds out about my strong beliefs on this? That's a huge thing. It's probably a sign that you need to have a talk with your mom. You need to have a talk with the people close to you and say, "Dude, I've got some things on my heart that have been bugging me." My heart is broken over these these issues. Or I want to have a voice in this category. I want to speak about this thing more. I was helping my friend, this model we were talking about. I was like, well, you can take baby steps. Pick something in your industry. Pick something in modeling that is similar to the cause that's in your heart. Bring that up with your mom and start there. Start on that topic. You could you could do your sexy bikini photo shoot on the beach and just put like, hey, little tidbit people didn't know, but this thing is happening in the ocean. I spend a ton of time in the ocean. You've seen my thongy ass here in the ocean. I love this ocean, but it's getting fucked up in these ways. You know, put a little tidbit into the industry you're in. Show people what you're passionate about. I was encouraging my friend, you'll probably get more followers. You'll probably get more more followers. Dude, you, you know what's better? Then a hot ass bikini model uh, with cute tan lines and a cute smile and cute teeth. You know what's better than that is the hot ass bikini model with cute teeth and a cute smile and cute tan lines who also um, has a vision, who also believes in some shit. That's even better. You'll probably get more followers. You might lose a few, but you will gain hundreds more. Ah, What a dream come true. Uh, look at all the bikini models I follow. Uh, World changers. World changers. Badass. Badass. What if my mom finds out about my beliefs? Well, find some small places to start and start influencing them a little bit. You know, there's always a conversation you can have with family. We don't give family enough credit for trust. What if they find out about this passion inside of me? We don't give them enough credit. It give them a chance. Slowly and slowly start opening up some conversations. Ask them some questions. Hey mom, what do you, what do you think about this thing? I've been thinking about it. What are your thoughts? I bet you'll be far more surprised than you think. Start there. What if I come across cheesy? What if my close loved ones, my mom, my dad, uh, find out about my beliefs? You know, I was thinking about this the other day. Um, I love nerdy shit. Like I'm, I'm, I'm pretty hunky. I'm pretty athletic. I'm pretty, I'm pretty standard jock guy, but I was always the jock guy who loved Star Wars. I was always the jock guy who would do jokes at the parties. I was always the dance joker guy. Uh, And sometimes I don't want to like fly my nerd flag because I'm trying to impress like a lady or something, a woman, you know, what if she, she sees me as like this pretty collected, um, like captain of the football team, Captain America. But what if she finds out that I love Star Wars and I like going to movie premieres and Halloween is my favorite time of year because I get to dress up like an absolute banshee. What if she finds out about that? And guess what? Every single time that fear rises up, these women like me more when they're like, you love nerd shit? You love Harry Potter? Come here and kiss me, you little bastard. Oh, you love Star Wars? Oh, you love Marvel movies? Oh, you love Disney? Oh, you love Disney? Get over here and start making out with me right now. Let's put on our mouse ears and make the fuck out right now. 
But still, some, for some reason, that little fear is within me. Let your nerd flag fly. Let your freak flag fly. She's a lady on the street and a freak in the bed. Let it fly. What if people find out about the shit that I'm into that I'm passionate about? Dude, you got to ask yourself, do you want to live in that shadow anymore? Or do you want to have a voice? Like I said, it's not for everybody. Some people like just chilling, not fucking it up. But maybe you are excited about something. Maybe the whole point of today's topic is, and it's coming up in every conversation I have with my friends is, what are you not talking about that you want to talk about? Maybe you've done everything in life. You've made all the money. You've got the family that you've always dreamed of. You've got that vintage Ford Mustang that you've always wanted. Your house, all these things, all these goals, but something's missing in the happiness piece. It's usually this topic. Dude, I want to stand for something. I want to start talking about something, writing about something, doing art about a topic. It's usually this piece that's missing. And it's fascinating to me in the happiness category, in the happiness topics. Are you, what if there's, what if you're suffering a little bit inside? What if there's some anxiety? What if there's some pressure on you because you're not living out a belief that's in there? Very well could be. Very well could be. A third fear that came up in our conversation is that um, I, I won't get as many likes. Yeah, you got to get used to that. What if my next post on Instagram is more about something I'm passionate about and less about the shape of my butt and I don't get as many likes? That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. But I'm telling you, when you show the shape of your cute butt and talk about your passions, you're gonna get more likes. You're gonna be, man, I love this girl. I love this model. She's got a really nice butt and a really nice heart. What if I don't get as many likes? You've trained yourself, we've trained ourselves to post on Instagram to try to get people's approval. You know, this is, this is such a beat topic. Like I don't wanna to spend too much time on it because it's such a beat topic. Did you guys know that some markets for Instagram are experimenting with taking away the likes program? Taking away the likes program. There's market research that shows an Instagram in this climate, in this culture, in this town, in this city, in this country, if you take away the likes, we're going to get more subscribers. You know, Facebook and Instagram is going to make more money. A lot of people think, no, there's no way. Likes are the key part of it. It's, it's not true. They're experimenting with that. And that's more of a profitable thing and more way to get more people involved. But it would be pretty cool. It would be pretty cool to experience that. I'm not a big Instagrammer. I need to be better at it. I don't market myself enough. I need to be better at that shit. A lot of us can do way better. But it'd be cool to experience social media that wasn't based on likes and approval. You know, Maybe there was another thing. The only thing that lasted was comments. So like likes didn't go on there. You see somebody who, who you know, makes, puts out their post, maybe it's a modeling photo shoot or maybe it's, you know, a political statement, whatever. And it, it doesn't show how many likes, but there's a ton of comments that you can read through. All of a sudden you're getting more into the human side of the story. You're getting more into the human interest piece. So, so if you're conditioned to express yourself to the world in this way, and it's gotten you a lot of, you know, what you could call approval or feedback, this new way, you got to get used to the difference. Of course, you're probably not going to get as much likes. Of course. You know, if the Instagram model is sitting there and it's like sculpted ass, sculpted ass, sculpted ass, sculpted ass, boom, 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 likes, 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 sculpted ass, nice boobs, sculpted ass, sculpted ass. And then all of a sudden I see her in her sweats and she's like, I've got a story about this homeless family I helped. I've got a story, here I am in my sweats and I'm in my apartment and I'm really thinking about gun control. Here I am in my apartment thinking about this next big ass election for American history coming up next year and I'm having thoughts. I'm having questions. It's not gonna get as many likes, of course. Of course it's not gonna get as many likes. The question is, is, is that something you wanna share? You know, Is that something you wanna put out there? We're talking about Instagram a lot because that's, you know, where my friend makes the majority of her income. But 
this topic of finding happiness by expressing your beliefs and your shit and the stuff that's like brewing inside of you that's bubbling up out of you and you need to put it somewhere. I got all this love and all this passion and all this shit bubbling. I just don't know where to put it. It doesn't have to be Instagram. You could put it on a column. You could put it on a written blog. You could put it out there for the world to see on Reddit. Dude, Reddit is still exploding because it's a place where people can write whatever the fuck they're thinking of. I guarantee you go on Reddit and you type in some weird shit, you're gonna find a topic for that. It's become a place where people can express themselves. A YouTube channel, people can express themselves. Podcast, people can express themselves. There's a, there's a thousand different ways to do it. What if this is one of the big things missing in happiness for people? I'm doing all the shit I'm supposed to do, but I also wanna talk about my jams, my things. CEOs and business leaders right now are, are discussing how profitability will go up in their businesses if they listen to the beliefs of their employees. You know, it seems counterintuitive. A lot of times when you're running a company or a business, which a lot of us have done, you're like, hey, go do A, B, and C. Make us money. Just do your job. Keep your mouth shut. But the studies are now showing when we listen to the passion in the heart of the people that we're involved with, it's our, it's our employees, our employers, our family, our friends, our romance partners, the happiness goes up. What are you passionate about? What are you passionate about? Man, I just spent some good time with my dad. His name's Kevin Sr. And it was really fun to just go through his life's history and, and say, what are the things that you are passionate about? And he told me about protesting in college. He was protesting um, war stuff. He was protesting political movements. And he said those were some of the happiest times in his life. And he got away from that and he started doing all the shit that he's supposed to do. But I loved having that talk with my dad. And me and my dad are pretty politically different. You know, I think as, as we both grow older, we're getting closer together. But it was so cool to hear him tell those stories. Hear the things that he's passionate about. My dad also confessed he's passionate about Star Wars and aliens and sci-fi movies and Star Trek, which I am too. It was a really cool conversation. It was a really cool conversation. When we take the time to do that with our employees, with our family, like what, what are you passionate about? What are you thinking about? What are you thinking about? Uh, my brother texted me the other day and he's like, anything new and exciting going on? And what he's really saying, you know, we haven't talked in, a, in, a, in, in too long. It's been too long. But what he's really saying is like, what's going on, man? What's the passion? What's the vibe? Because we aren't designed, I don't think, as humans to just put one foot in front of the other and pay the bills and pay the mortgage and make them more money. We are designed to like get to know each other and talk about interesting shit. I think that's the case. When I go out with my bros, with my bro bros, my bro homies, my bro Cephas's, my bro teen shakes, when I go out with them, we can spit the bowl and we can bullshit for a little while, right? Like we can do that for an hour or two get some drinks, make jokes, like do like bravado. Oh yeah, dude, I, I fucking did this and I fucking did it. But eventually it's got to get serious and it's got to get passionate and it's got to get real or it's not going to last long for me. You know, cool, 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 cool. Oh, you got that girlfriend? Cool, 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 cool. Hey man, tell me some shit that's been on your heart. Tell me something interesting you've been thinking about. Tell me how we can solve this problem. Oh, that's where the relationship's going to find its, its like teeth. Sink your teeth into that. What if, I, what if people think I'm cheesy? They will. What if my mom gets her feelings hurt because she finds out about my by beliefs? She will. What if I don't get as many likes and as much approval as I used to when I kept it here? You won't. All those fears are 100% true. All those fears are going to come true when you reveal... The, the, the important shit in your heart, but it'll be better for you. It'll be better, better for you. I think this is a happiness topic because standing for something is meaningful. You know, standing for something is meaningful. Um, and it could be as simple as like standing for having a badass family. Dude, I am all about family. I'm all about raising my kids and loving them and showing them that the world is their oyster and I want to give them the best life. And da, da, da. You could write and talk about that. That's not too simple. That's one of the deepest, most beautiful things there is. That's one of the best things. Maybe that's your thing and you're realizing, I want to talk about it more. I love family. I love my family. Maybe, maybe I can help other people figure out family. I think standing for something is on the pathway to happiness. 
We're all searching for meaning, right? I'm attractive to a lot of people because I'm funny and I'm energetic and I, I, you know, I know how to have a good time. I can get my drink on, you know, I'll try out, I'll try a bunch of fucking drugs and weird shit with you guys. But I think people know at some point in the night, I'm going to ask the right questions. What have you been thinking about? Where, where are we changing the world these days? You know, where are we changing the world these days? Where are we making a difference and an impact? Where are we expressing that shit that's on our hearts? So this podcast today is like asking that question. What if this is one of the non-talked about happiness factors? Having a voice, finding your voice, finding your place. Talking about that shit that is not going to make you as popular, but is going to make you feel good. And uh, you're probably going to be surrounded with more love. The people who really love you are going to come out of the woodwork. I love this topic. I think this is a legitimate topic. It's legitimate. I had to throw out this podcast today because, dude, this is bubbling up out of me. I'm, I'm curious about this. I'm like curious about the science and the health of this. What if it's like healthy as fuck to find your voice and to work on finding your voice and to work on talking about a thing that's in your heart? Makes you feel better. Makes you live better. Makes you healthier. Makes you live longer. What if it has crazy health effects? I think this is cool. I think this is cool, cool, cool. This has been another podcast on The Kevin Wright Show. I love you. I hope you're going out there. Summer is coming to a close. God damn it. I love you. And I hope you're going out there and you're making life good. And you're thinking about some shit. And you're working through. Working through these topics. I love you. See ya.